So do you qualify for the EB1A Extraordinary Ability Visa, Category 4 Green Card? Now, in this video, I'll talk about who is eligible and why you should consider the EB1A, specifically since UCIS early in the year, specifically transferring their cases to the EB1A category if they're eligible because there was a surplus of visas and they were going to be processing these cases really, really fast. So, once again, if you're interested in this topic, you want to know if you qualify and how to do it, I'll see you on the other side. Hello everybody and welcome back to Immigration Channel. This is a place we get the most up-to-date immigration news, immigration information and everything else that you need to make your immigration journey less stressful. My name is Jacob Sapochnik and I'm an immigration attorney located in San Diego, California and I help clients in all 50 states and all over the world. This video will talk about the EB1A in depth, who qualifies and how can you get this green card opportunity, self-petition, without an employer, in record fast time. But before we do that, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, and also give us a big like so YouTube will be able to show this video to more people just like you. So as you know, in order to qualify for a green card through employment, typically you need to have an employer, somebody to sponsor you. And in most cases, it's not that easy to do, it's not easy to find an employer, to convince them to do that for you. And therefore, there are a few categories that allow you for self-petition. In this video, I'm going to focus on the EB1A. EB1A is the Extraordinary Ability Visa. It's reserved for individuals who can demonstrate extraordinary abilities in science, art, education, business, and athletics. And this can be shown through national or international recognition. Because of the talent of the individuals who apply in this category, they can self-petition. They don't need an employer and they can bypass the entire process of labor certification to prove that there are no U.S. citizens who are being impacted if they get a green card. Here's an example of clients that we've done before that qualified for the EB1 category. We've done athletes, specifically runners, tennis players, Olympian swimmers, we process soccer players, baseball players, rugby players, fashion designers, interior designers, architects. Some of these people were able to get EB1A as well because of the talent and because of their niche. We process physicians and researchers. We process startup founders, specifically in software and in biotech. Music producers, music composers, actors, musicians and singers. They all qualified for EB1A category in their niche. Number one, evidence of receipt of national or international recognized prizes. Number two, evidence in an association that demands outstanding excellence, that demands outstanding achievement from their members. Number three, evidence of published materials about you in major trade or professional publications. Number four, evidence that you've been asked to judge the work of others on a panel or some sort of competition. Number five, evidence of your original work, whether it's in science, in business, in arts, it has to be your original work. It has to be your original work that contributed to major significance in your field. Number six, evidence of your scholarly articles. Now remember, we don't need to get all of these. You just need three of these 10 points. Number seven, evidence that your work has been exhibited in artistic exhibitions. Next, evidence of your performance in a critical or leading role. Evidence that you commanded a high salary. This is one of the popular ones that we always use. And finally, evidence of your commercial success in the performing arts. Once again, you don't need all these, just three out of these 10. Now, one big question that we always get, so what if we don't meet any of these 10 criteria? What do we do then? How do we qualify for the EB1A? Well, remember this, some industries don't meet the criteria of UCIS. These criteria are very, very broad. And some industries, specifically some new media, have their own ways to prove that a person is extraordinary. So for example, we had a case of an interior designer that didn't meet all these criteria, but he was able to get his own independent comparable evidence. So for example, he had very strong recommendation letters. He was able to get some more media and press about him, about his work, about his innovative technology that he was using to create his designs, which was outside of the traditional prizes and recognition that is outlined in those 10 points from UCIS. To submit expert letters from peers in the field, from associations that are now in this narrow area of law. And he was a member 
of some associations that were rather new but they were very important in his field of expertise. Most importantly, because he was traveling the world and doing what he was doing, we were able to show that he actually earned international acclaim. And so while he didn't have exactly the points UCIS wanted, we were able to still show that he meets the standard by giving comparable evidence. So remember, don't get discouraged. If you have what it takes, if your field is narrow enough, and that's kind of how we work with you to be able to narrow that field down to explain to UCIS, it is still possible for you to apply for the EB1A if we can show those elements. Now, another question that people ask is, do you need to win like the Nobel Prize or the Emmys or first place award to qualify for the EB1A? Well, the answer is no. We had a case where somebody won a third place in a competition. We had a case when we've done a visa for a singer and that singer won a third place in a competition. This was a worldwide competition comparable to the Eurovision. And we were able to show to UCS that while he didn't win the first place, the fact that he was able to even be top three is incredible because there were over a thousand candidates that tried to reach that goal and he was one of three that were able to do so. He was number three. And it was, it was a large enough competition to show to the UCIS that even though he won third place, he was still extraordinary compared to others in that space. Now remember, one of the key elements to success of EB1A is to define the field of your extraordinary ability. What is actually that field? So if you're coming from, let's say, a scientific area or business or arts, we have to narrow down your field to make it easier to demonstrate how exceptional you are in that space. And sometimes it requires back and forth communication between us and the client, but that's one of the key successes in our ability to win those cases. Because the way we do it is that we show that you're one of the few at the top of your field, that field that we were able to narrow down to explain to the UCIS why you are one of the top. So remember, sometimes it's important to get evaluated to see if you qualify, because if you do, that process can be very effective. Another important question people ask me is how long does it take to process this application? So typically what we do is we file the I-140, which is the immigrant petition. It takes about a couple of months to prepare it. Letters of recommendation, the articles about you, all the other supported documents, your, your full detailed resume, our legal brief. And once the case is filed, you can also use premium processing where you, you can pay an additional fee to the U.S. immigration and you, can, and you can get your case processed in about two weeks, which is really, really fast compared to other applications that can take months and months to process. So if you qualify for the EB1A, we strongly recommend that you file this using the premium processing. If you have a spouse and children under 21, they can also come with you and they're gonna be able to get the green cards with you because spouse and children can join you as part of the application as well. Now, it's really important to know that when you apply for the EB1A, we have to prove to the United States government that you're gonna be continuing to work in your field. So if you're coming from the arts or from science or from entrepreneurship, you have to continue to do that while you go through the process of getting your green card and when you get your green card. It's really important to understand that because it's a self-petition, the government is trusting you that when they give you that green card, you're gonna to continue to advance in your field and you continue to thrive and, and benefit the government with your external ability. Now, once again, if you want to be evaluated to see if you qualify for the EB1A, the EB1A category is now very, very popular. UCS still encourages applicants to transfer their petitions if they qualify. And also for new applicants that are coming from overseas, if they meet the requirements, there are enough visas to qualify for the EB1A visa. This category is current in the visa bulletin. So if you qualify for the EB1A or you wanna be able to determine if you qualify, please text me 619-483-4549 and let's determine together if you meet the requirements of EB1A and has what it takes to get the green card as a self-petitioner. Once again, thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video.